Podcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, traders. Uh, welcome to the DX Feed Bookmap webinar, and uh, we'll be looking at uh, uh, U.S. equities trading, U.S. equities, uh, in the uh, data visualization. Uh, that you're getting through DX Feed Bookmap. And um, the whole goal here is to show you how to get a competitive advantage uh, right now, uh, today. And uh, it's going to be through the visualization of Bookmap uh, as well as the data feed uh, that comes from uh, DX Feed. Okay, so let's get uh, into the risk disclaimer here. Uh, trading equities and futures involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Okay, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Bruce, a trader of 10 years in a variety of markets, uh, order flow, flow specialist here at Bookmap. I lead the uh, Bookmap trading education, uh, expertise in order flow and micro uh, market microstructure. Uh, you can uh, find us on Twitter. Uh, at bookmap underscore pro. You can subscribe to our YouTube page, uh, look up bookmap on YouTube, and you can uh, reach out to us at support at bookmap.com if you have any questions. Okay, so uh, just starting off here with these pretty lofty, uh, bold statement, uh, get a competitive advantage now. Uh, but uh, I think um, by the end of the webinar, uh, you'll be able to uh, understand what I'm saying. Uh, and how we're objectively going through that and showing this. Okay, so um, uh, ask any questions uh, along the way here. Uh, I'll probably hold off until a bit later uh, to, to answer them, but uh, just get them in uh, in the uh, questions uh, section there. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, what we're going to cover and go over is uh, looking at um, all market liquidity and full depth of market. Uh, reading the order flow in my, micro and macro structures, reading the algos and larger players, uh, and then examples of some bookmap traders. But mostly uh, we're going to get into um, some of the uh, live market analysis and uh, and also set some orders to show you uh, about the a little bit about the one-click trading uh, in bookmap. All right. So <clears throat> let's uh, continue on here. Now the goal here is... Um, we're going to showing this. Uh, this is from the you know the presentation here. Uh, interesting slide of Apple from uh, back in March twenty uh, second. Uh, now the um, the goal here though is to look at this here. Uh, if you're new to Bookmap, completely new, uh, by the end of the webinar, be able to understand what you're looking at and how to start to anticipate future price movement by what you see here in uh, in Bookmap. All right. So uh, that's our uh, lofty goal. Uh, and uh, hold on just a minute here. I think uh, just closed a window I did not want to close. Okay, where did that go? Ah, okay, I got it. <clears throat> okay, so uh, let's uh, move on here. Uh, the overview uh, of uh, DX Feed Bookmap. So what is it? Uh, well, it, uh, Bookmap is a trading platform, and we're connecting um, through uh, DX Feed. Okay, now uh, DX Feed, you can trade uh, right from the Bookmap chart. Any of the trading though that you that you do is going to take place within an Interactive Brokers Traders Workstation, okay, or an Interactive Brokers account. Uh, that's the only connection that we have right now between a linked live account and uh, and DX Feed. Okay, but it is possible if you have that interactive brokers uh, account. Uh, we're working on others, uh, so uh, it's just our initial uh, offering here. Okay, so um, again, what is a, a DXP bookmap? Unique visualization software. Uh, we're we're a, a trading platform uh, and uh, showing the market in a unique way. Uh, the um, DXP bookmap uh, connects to all U.S. equities. I'll go over the connection uh, in a bit. And then uh, uh, it also allows uh, for um, futures and digital currency connections as well. Okay. Now I want to start off here with a poll uh, just to get uh, a little bit of insight from, uh, from some of the traders here. Uh, how do you use the dome? Okay. So let me uh, get this poll going and launch it. Okay. So you should see it now. Uh, and, um, the uh, the question here, uh, you know, how do you use a dome? Uh, and uh, it's uh, multiple um, 
uh, choice. So you can uh, answer with um, uh, as many times as you like here. Uh, if you never use it, you're not accustomed to it at all, uh, or is this something that um, uh, you use just for setting orders and managing some of your trades, and really that's about it? Uh, or do you start to look at some simple analysis of the uh, liquidity levels uh, every now and then when you're uh, engaged in a trade or managing a trade? Or uh, perhaps uh, you um, are uh, using it for, um, uh, you know, a, a lot of, uh, of just adding to trades on, on higher time frames um, and uh, just kind of uh, uh, managing, but uh, looking at the dome at specific uh, areas on the higher time frames. Or the uh, most uh, active is going to be a, a scalper, okay? Who's really just looking at the dome and, and maybe maybe a, a higher time frame chart. Oops, I'm sorry here. Uh, let's. Um, so uh, yeah, let me know uh, if you guys can uh, start to uh, make some selections here and just give an overall feel for uh, uh, how you use the dome. Okay, it's pretty even so far. Couple scalpers, looks like, uh, and then some people rarely or ever use it. Okay, so nothing really in the middle, which is kind of interesting. Um, anyway, I'm going to show you like uh, you you're going to be able to use it on on for for all time frames here uh, in uh, in Bookmap, and the reason being is that um, we um, uh, we record that data and you can access it now on much higher time frames. Okay, so uh, it's going to be uh, uh, it's quite a quite a nice benefit here. Okay, so that uh, that dome and uh, all of those numbers uh, uh, changing very quickly, uh, you'll see that uh, uh, you'll be able to read that very easily and visually um, uh, in Bookmap. <clears throat> okay, so uh, just waiting for one more here. If you guys can uh, just get your uh, your votes in, one or two more. Oops. All right. So let's uh, let's close it up. All right. So yeah, it's really kind of in between, like uh, uh, far ends here. Uh, either uh, you don't use it very often, or very very little, or you're scalping. Okay, which is uh, which is great. We'll cover both ends, uh, no problem. All right. We'll close it up uh, and uh, get our screen back up here. Oops. Okay, so now you can see my screen again. All right. Okay, well, let's continue on. All right, so, um, and we're going to talk a little bit about market data. Uh, this is an important part, uh, especially today, more than ever, uh, than, uh, than before, because we're, we're getting into some of the nuances um, in order flow and having good data makes a difference. Okay. Uh, and in the past and also uh, today, uh, uh, most, most of us, uh, you know, most of the traders out there are really only accessing about 10% of the data in traditional charts. Uh, even with a footprint chart, uh, you're, you're, uh, you're only accessing about 10% of that data. Okay. You're looking at only the executed volume, okay? but you're looking at aggregated data still. And what do I mean by aggregated data? Well, that's that's really simple. You're looking at like some sort of a bar chart. Okay? It's going to aggregate within a, a time period. Uh, it could be five minutes. It could be an hour. It could be you know a one minute. Doesn't matter. Uh, it's still aggregated with open, high, low, and close of that period. Uh, and that's a real disadvantage. Uh, and um, uh, another one is uh, you know you'll try to make up for the difference with uh, a lot of indicators. Uh, and those indicators are uh, they're derivatives of time, price, and volume. So they're not giving you a complete picture of really what's going on. Uh, it uh, uh, is really um, a, a, a disservice in, in, a lot of, uh, in a lot of ways uh, because uh, uh, you um, are getting this kind of derivative based on something that is aggregated, which you can't even see where the orders are. Okay, And it's really about 10% of the volume 
uh, or, the, or the data that's uh, that's available out there. Well, in, in Bookmap, you're getting all of the data. You're getting all those executed trades, but you're not looking at aggregated data. You're looking at best bid and offer historically. So you're seeing microstructure. Uh, and then you're looking at also uh, the full depth of market. Okay? So the current and historical market. And uh, this is... Uh, I, uh, looking, looking forward to showing that. I think you'll, uh, you'll, you'll really enjoy that. Now, the, the triangle you see over here on the, on the right-hand side, uh, based on good data, okay, you can draw information, uh, and then that information is going to lead to your knowledge, and then based on that knowledge over a time period, you're going to develop wisdom. So it all starts down with a good foundation with, with solid data, uh, and that's important to recognize, especially in today's markets. Right, so uh, data makes the difference. Uh, without good data, it's garbage in and garbage out. Right, so and the DX feed book map covers all U.S. equities. You get full depth of market, very low latency. There are servers around the globe, so uh, uh, the latency is is um, uh, uh, very low. Uh, and then um, I'll go over some of the uh, the um, uh, choices that you get with the data. Okay? There's Nasdaq total view and last sale. Uh, there's edge X, which is basically bats, uh, or you can get both of these together. You can get the combo, uh, and get uh, NASDAQ and edge X together. All right. Now using the dome, uh, this is the view we're, we're accustomed to using a dome, especially for stocks. Uh, on this side, we have the bid here on the other side, we have the offer. This is the top of the book right here. This is the current market, your level one data. Uh, and, uh, uh you know, here's the bid at, uh, 2464. Uh, here's the uh, the ask at uh, 2466 with a, a two uh, cent spread, okay? And you can see the liquidity providers. You can see the price levels, uh, and you can see the amount of liquidity here on at at each price level, right? So uh, a lot of information here, and these numbers are constantly changing. They're constantly adding and pulling liquidity, okay? So reading this uh, is um, uh, very very difficult. Um, it's great to use the dome. I mean, uh, uh, you know, you're you're looking at uh, at things at a professional level. Uh, you can see some of the larger players uh, very clearly, uh, it, black and white in the text. Uh, and um, uh, you you can also uh, uh, you know uh, manage your entries, exits, and and trade management on these very low low time frames. Uh, but um, uh, let's go over the the, the dome and book map and compare. Okay, so uh, you, we can. I compare the uh, apples to apples and oranges to oranges here. The top of the book is here, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, you know, best best bid, best ask. Uh, where it is in Bookmap, it's over here. Okay. This uh, the the um, current market uh, is um, uh, to the right of this vertical white line, and this dashed green line. This is your best bid. Okay. Your best ask is right here with the dashed red line. Okay, now these don't add up. I mean, they're two different symbols. I'm just, uh, I pulled an image off of the internet. Uh, and uh, we're looking at uh, Green Mountain Coffee Roasters versus Apple here. Okay. Uh, and um, so uh, that's uh, the top of the book, the uh, um, level one inside uh, data. Uh, here's your depth here on, on the ask. Okay, your depth of market here uh, in your dome and then your depth of market here in book map. Okay. All of these are sellers lined up to sell. I mean, sorry, these are all buyers here on, on the bid to, to buy at these levels, and here they are on the bid here. Okay. Here they are on the ask okay, in book map up above current price. Okay. So we have a reference with price and uh, where the uh, buyers and sellers are. Okay. Now the disadvantages here of using this dome. Well, uh, first is that there's no historical view. Okay. When these numbers change, it's back to the current market. You'll have to memorize what those areas were, okay? Uh, and uh, due to that, it's really difficult, uh, basically impossible to start to read some of the algorithmic activity, okay? Uh, some of the larger players, uh, very difficult to read uh, because uh, they'll be changing that liquidity from one level to the next and you won't be able to see it. Uh, maybe it'll catch your eye for a minute, but then, uh, uh, you know, where will they uh, land next? Um, very tedious to read uh, and... Um, uh, you you certainly get no microstructural content or context, or nor any kind of macrostructural uh, context. Very difficult. Uh, the advantages in Bookmap is you get this quick graphical representation. Uh, let me explain what uh, what it is here uh, in Bookmap. Now we covered best bid and offer here, the depth here 
uh, on the uh, on the on the offer and your depth on the bid. Okay, and uh, this number here is your last traded volume. And what you're looking at in in the um, in the heat map here uh, is are areas of very high liquidity that are transformed into a heat map. And that's it. So what we're doing is taking the dome, these no, these numeric values here. So there's 3,600 shares up here, okay, and then followed by uh, uh, 2,200, just uh, one cent higher here in Apple, uh, and um, and then we paint it into the heat map. And there's a graphical representation of the liquidity. So the scaling uh, is is um, uh, you can see the darkest red up here. Well, here by far in the book, uh, you know, larger players are up here. Uh, almost 32,000 shares are up here. Okay, so that that area is this kind of dark red. Uh, and uh, then when it gets uh, lighter orange, these are areas of a little you know of less liquidity. So about a tenth of the size here. Uh, one one uh, a tick above, okay. And note the areas here as well. Larger players are at where, 186.50. Okay, these these uh, round number figures. You're going to see this again and again, especially with the U.S. equities. Uh, and uh, less liquidity. Well, this one's 2,200. Well, you can see it's kind of this yellowish white uh, color. Uh, and um, uh, on the bid, they're down here at uh, 186.24 with uh, 2,360 shares uh, available there on the bid. Pretty close to the one tick away or one cent away from the uh, best uh, uh, best bid. All right, um, now another advantage that you're getting with uh, uh, DX feed uh, book map is it's a consolidated feed. Okay? We've stripped away those uh, market uh, uh, market makers uh, and it's all, all together at one price level, okay, all added. Uh, and consolidated uh, together. So, you, you know, you can very quickly read it. Uh, you don't have to look at all those kind of details. Uh, the um, uh, microstructural context uh, is right in front of us. Okay, and what do I mean? Well, we since we record this data, uh, to the left of this vertical white line is the uh, historical market. So uh, you can see that they were they were offering up here uh, this entire time, but look at up here at 186.46. Uh, uh, See, note these striations in the in the map, uh, and note that it went from orange to yellow to kind of this you know pale or beige, uh, and then it ended up back there. Okay. Well, that's the adding and pulling of liquidity. So when it got uh, uh, you know when it was orange, there was more. Uh, then they pulled, they added back in, uh, pulled some, added back in, and then pulled again. And that's what it looks like. Uh, now we can start to gauge the context and micro microstructural context of what's going on here. These guys down here, it looks like they traded okay, at 186.30. They stayed in the book and the, the aggressor, uh, the sellers took them on. They traded right into them right here. And again, they, now they traded into them and they had enough selling pressure to trade through that area uh, and traded on down below. Okay. And uh, we're also gonna be able to see a macro view. Okay, so let's continue on here, and let me just show you the uh, uh, elements here, and then I'll get into the microstructure. Okay, so this is the same chart we were just looking at, just a bigger view. Uh, so the other elements on the chart, now we've covered the heat map and liquidity. Okay, There's only two other elements on this chart. It's very, very simple, straightforward data. Uh, the second element here is the historical best bid and offer. Okay, So here's the current best bid and offer. Right, um, and then uh, the uh, historical is just this red line, and the green line here is the best bid. Okay, and this is it over time, and it allows us to see microstructure. All right, and uh, I'll talk about that in just a second. The uh, other areas here, um, uh, this red uh, dot here, okay, the, all of these red dots here, uh, this is aggressor uh, 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 sell volume. Okay, so they uh, hit the market sell button. Okay, and they're taking liquidity off of the best bid. And that's just how the market works. Uh, the green is the opposite. It's a aggressive market buy. Okay, they're, uh, they want to be buyers. They hit the market buy button. They pay up. They pay the spread. Uh, and they take liquidity off of the best offer. All right. So now we know what the volume looks like. We know what the historical best bid and offer looks like. Uh, and we also have the auction uh, where they're bidding and where they're offering. And we have that recorded, and we also have it in real time. All right, now, microstructure, we can start to read it. Okay? And we can put this into context, too, uh, of uh, of the heat map in that auction. 
uh, that I was just mentioning. Well, <laughs> we shy away from up here, uh, these 30, uh, 31,787 you know, contracts or, or shares up here, okay? Uh, you can see that the, the buyers start to nibble away at the top here, but they, they end up uh, kind of giving up here. We rotate lower, we find some sellers. They start to hit the bid. They were down below this little micro uh, consolidation area here, this micro structure. And we, we came down with some volume. Okay, you can see the, the aggressive sellers here. Right? And uh, a little bit of a tap back here, low volume tap back into this little area by just a few, uh, a few cents. And right back down and look at the sellers down here and the transactions down here okay price is pretty happy down here it's it's now down below this area okay it's down in this microstructure and then now look what look what occurs down here look at them uh first off on the um uh well basically on the on the offer here uh start to show very high liquidity and then again here uh at this uh 8638 area okay uh, they want to buy now is what they're showing okay? and they're, they're showing they want to sell here, but look at how uh, uh, the time length they were in that market, very little. And they came in again here okay? and um, uh, very high liquidity, uh, a couple of different uh, price levels here. Uh, and the reaction to it was we found the sellers and they traded through the, the buyers here. Okay. So we're trending down now. We've trended once down. We've come, come down again. Uh, we do get a, a pullback here, uh, but we find the sellers yet again, and we come back down into the next level of high liquidity. Okay. So uh, we're starting to read the uh, uh, the dome here uh, in a recent historical context in the microstructure. Okay. But since we record this data, okay, and it's available, when we start to zoom out, we're going to start to be able to use this data in the in the dome here. On much higher time frames so let's do that now this is going to be the same chart here okay we're looking at apple uh we're down here uh, uh for the moment here at 186 you know 25 let's say or, or 27 and we're going to zoom out here and then now we're up at 186.34 so it moved up a little bit right it was this little little area right here where we saw all that microstructural stuff but now i've zoomed out and we have several hours of data here okay from the u.s open here at 9 30. Okay, so now we can start to use the context of that dome on this much, much higher time frame. All of that little price action, well, uh, in the bigger picture, uh, we're looking at uh, uh, actually, um, it looks like it wants to come up and test this uh, uh, 186.39. Uh, um, I think that was in the, uh, or four, let's see, 45 and then 50 here. So we're going to see 50 in here, okay? So uh, it looks like they actually came in a little bit, uh, yeah, right around this, uh, uh, f they came in a little bit uh, earlier here. Uh, and then uh, that 45 area, they started to pull. Okay. And then uh, uh, here is that area where we're looking at with that, those 30, um, almost 32,000 share, uh, shares, right, at, the, at this uh, 186.50. And they've been here all day long, almost, almost all day long. Okay, we saw some quick actions here, and then they layered in here. Okay, and this is what I mean by full depth of market, and uh, I'll touch on this many times here uh, because uh, this is quite an advantage. All of these areas are live, even though they're several dollars away from current price, or can be. They can be ten dollars, a hundred dollars away. They're still going to be live areas. Okay, so when 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 larger players start to layer in uh, with high liquidity, you're going to be able to see it, uh, and that's going to give you an advantage. So anyway, uh, now we're starting to understand where they are. Uh, you know, here are the sellers up here, okay? Buyers, well, uh, we, we kind of broke out of this little area here and they're supporting it down at 186 now, okay? So note this little kind of pattern. In fact, uh, kind of a, a, a shoulder, head, shoulder, uh, some sideways action, and then we broke above right here. And uh, it's been bullish so far. So they're here at 186 to support any move to the, uh, uh, any pullback and then looking for a move to the upside. Anyway, using starting to use the uh, macro view with the dome because you can. Uh, and then uh, here uh, we'll start to get into some of uh, some of these examples. And this is where I want to get into the live market. Uh, these, if we don't see good examples in the live market, we'll come back and look at some of these uh, static images. Okay, because some of these static images they show it very very clearly. Um, 
like a reversal here. Uh, you know, where where are they on the bid? 101. There's no question about it. Very high liquidity here. It trades through it. The, the sellers trade through it, right? But uh, we kind of rotate back and forth and we find the buyers and we trade up above it. The sellers come right back in. I'm, I'm sorry, the buyers come right back in and they're bidding again here at 101. So we have our like shoulder here. They shied away from it. They traded through it. This is our head. And then here's our shoulder. Okay. And uh, note uh, how they're still back in here at 101 supporting price. Where's the target? Well, it's the high liquidity. It's up here at 102. Okay. And you can see that they started to come in here at this area here because why? Because it's kind of the top of this range here and then a little bit higher as well. Uh, and then let's just take a look though. Uh, it, it is, did the buyers take control uh, of this area? Absolutely. Uh, look at the volume that traded up here and what type of volume is it? Well, we can see it. We can look at the dots here and we can start to understand that there, there are a lot of buyers up here aggressive buyers we can also see it in the uh, sub chart down here where it really started to pick up okay so uh, buyers in control uh go away from the uh the 101 area and uh, looking to target the 102. all right so i'm going to go through these examples quickly um and um and then we're going to look at the live market and look for the same things okay here's uh, another area and uh, uh, you'll see this all the time as well um the uh, high areas of liquidity here's our open at 930 look at the larger players immediately you know where they are uh, they're layering in here at um, uh, 180 181 182 183 okay uh, we we kind of go back and forth here but we trade into it and look at the uh, transactions the buyers take these guys on uh, and uh, there is a pullback it looks like they were absorbed but uh, we we find more buyers again we, those uh, we we don't find anyone wanting to sell here again at 180. They want to sell now at 181, where they've been waiting, uh, and that we get a nice uh, uh, breakout to the upside here. We get a pullback to where we broke from here. Okay, note how they're starting to flip again. Okay, from they were on the offer here. Now look at them starting to flip and be buyers here on the bid uh, at 180. Right, so uh, if they're starting to support it here and we find buyers again, we're gonna rotate back up and we're gonna trade into the higher liquidity. We're starting to trend now. We're making higher highs and we're starting to target these areas of high liquidity. And note how these areas that uh, were um, supply turn into demand, okay? And pretty, pretty nice example. Uh, you'll see it uh, again and again. Target, ultimate target is 183. All right, that's where the high, the very high liquidity is uh, here in uh, in Facebook. All right, uh, another one. Uh, this is absorption, and I alluded to absorption here, or started to call it out. Uh, here we're looking at uh, Facebook again, and uh, up at 183. I'm not sure if this. I think this might have been the same chart. Um, not sure, but uh, the uh, very very high liquidity up here. Shy away from it. Trade into it here. Totally absorbed. How, how do I know it's totally absorbed? 52,000 shares are up here, okay? Uh, and uh, I, I know that this is totally absorbed because there's still shares up here, okay? And the buyers did not trade through it, all right? So if they can't trade through it, we've got to find more buyers. Where are we gonna find them? On the bid down here, okay? They're down here, we, we're, we're, they're, they've already been in the book here, uh, 182.60. They also start to come in where? 182.50. Okay, you'll see it again and again uh, at the uh, at the big figures, uh, and uh, that's where we're going to find the buyers. And uh, if we if we find enough buyers, we'll probably probably rotate back up and, and maybe test retest this area up here again. Anyway, that's uh, absorption. And this is what absorption looks like when the aggressor meets uh, that very very high liquidity here and cannot trade through it. Totally absorbed by the sellers. All right, here's another one in Apple, good example, completely absorbed uh, up into this area here, as you can see, and they, they were still on the book uh, this entire time. All right, uh, let's go over the opposite of uh, absorption uh, and um, uh, start to get into some of the uh, liquidity and, and transactions here. Um, the opposite uh, is uh, lack of trading, okay? There's, uh, there's no one there. Uh, and there's no one interested in trading there either. So uh, look at these little points here. Okay? Look at the transactions down here. We just see the best bid. 
and just the best bid, right? There's nothing, no, no one trading down there. There's no interest in trading down here. No sellers are willing to hit that bid here and, and try to drive price lower. Uh, there's just no interest in selling. So uh, it rotates back up. And where does it rotate back up into? It rotates back up into these areas here where there's high liquidity uh, and transactions, right? Market uh, needs that uh, those those um, uh, that high liquidity and needs transactions, uh, and that's how you start to get into your you know volume profiles etc. of uh, you know uh, price and acceptance and areas. It's rejection uh, down here. It's rejecting and it's it's coming back up into the range. That's what's occurring here. And that's what I mean by exhaustion. And and bookmap uh, shows it uh, pretty pretty nicely here. All right. Um, Let's continue to move on. Uh, I'm going to go through these quickly, like I said, so we can get into some of the live analysis and then get to your questions. Um, algorithmic activity that you're going to you're going to see these guys like a, they're going to stick out like a sore thumb. Uh, here's an uh, ignition algo, and uh, I'll I'll describe what it is here quickly. It's very high liquidity, right? Uh, and you can see it's got to be one individual actor because note how he has this he's providing this liquidity here, pulls it. Adds it, adds it some uh, cents higher, uh, pulls it again, adds it higher, pulls it again, etc. And then at this point here at uh, one, uh, uh, or this is Amazon, so at uh, 15.98 and 60 cents, uh, they stay in the book here. Okay, the game here is uh, is pretty simple. Uh, it, it looks pretty straightforward. Uh, very high demand here. Okay. And, uh, and, and what do we, what, what happens here? What is the reaction? We're finding some, uh, some buyers, uh, especially in this area here, we're going to target 1600. They're trying to ignite, um, uh, uh, buys above 1600 is what it looks like to me. And in fact, these guys pull at 1600 here as right at the last second, when price is coming up here, they pull that very high liquidity as you can see, and price is able to easily float up above it. Okay. As it continues to search for sellers. Right, so it's trying to. It, it might be igniting stops. It might be trying to. It's just trying to ignite buyers, uh, and it's working. Uh, here are the buyers, and here they are again as price continue on up. Right, and you'll start to understand these algos and the behavior of these algos. Now, this is a disruptive and prohib prohibitive uh, practice, uh, but that you'll still see it. Right, and uh, you know it needs to be proven. Uh, you know they stayed in the book here, so you know it had the potential to trade. Anyway, let's move on. Um, the uh, skew of the book. Here's another one. Uh, reading that algorithmic activity, looking at J.P. Morgan. Very high liquidity up here. Okay, twenty-nine thousand shares are up here. Uh, and uh, look at this guy. Uh, and we know this has got to be an individual actor, okay? Because high liquidity up here pulls it, adds it lower. It was in here for a little bit. Pulls it, adds it lower. Getting very aggressive now. A very close to current price pulls as lower and does it again okay so uh, it looks like you know they're trying to show a lot of supply here to try to get price to uh, uh, go down uh, and um, you know they might be chasing they might be they might be doing a lot of different things uh, to me though this looks like uh, uh, trying to skew the order book uh, to um, uh, you know dissuade uh, those uh, those buyers uh, and try to find sellers uh, to get maybe down into some of these areas uh, where maybe they'll scoop it up for a, for a lower price. Anyway, uh, you can read the algorithmic behavior here. Okay, and uh, this is another great one here. Um, you'll see this again and again during economic releases uh, and news. Uh, and um, uh, here is uh, Tesla, and this was actually during uh, it was. Uh, Let's see, March, March 22nd again, and uh, this was during uh, the uh, tariff, uh, geopolitical tensions. Uh, I think Trump was uh, mentioning uh, something about uh, uh, tariffs with, uh, with China. And, well, uh, that's good news for Tesla, as you can see very clearly here. But what I want to point out here uh, is the, um, see this liquidity here? Uh, as soon as that news came out, look what happened, okay? They started pulling that liquidity. We can see a distinct line here. Okay, so there's risk all of a sudden. Something's new and uh, is is geopolitical news. Okay, but what happens here? What do we read? Well, we can start to see like, okay, these guys actually popped back in, but they pulled. Okay, so they don't want to trade. 
uh, at these areas. This guy certainly doesn't want to trade at this area here, uh, but this guy does. Why is that? Well, we're starting to understand and read that this player up here, and they've spent millions of dollars on their analysis uh, to understand what the worth of Tesla is. And they think it's a sell up here. Okay. So when there's no liquidity and it gets dark in these other areas because they've been pulling that liquidity, price is going to come up into those areas where they're still willing to sell. And that's exactly what it does. Actually, someone did pop in and front run that a little bit here, as you can see, at 319. Uh, and then uh, 3, 320, 320, 10, that, that was uh, where, it, uh, where it came up into. Okay. So you're starting to understand valuation of larger players who have spent millions of dollars to put risk into the market. And this was their assessment. Okay. So it's, it's good to look at it that way of, and you'll see like during economic releases as well as geopolitical uh, news, uh, where the larger players have evaluated. Okay. In fact, we can take that one further. Now this is the same with Apple and I'll, I'm not going to go into the details on this. We, we got to get to that live market, but I, I want to um, uh, use that same uh, example here with the, um, uh, with the with the um, uh, depth of market, okay, in the open, okay, at the at the cash open. In fact, let's uh, get out of the the presentation and let me show you in the live market, okay. It's just like this one here uh, in um, uh, Netflix today, okay. Where are the larger players? Here, here's our 9:30 open, clear as day. Here's here's where they started to layer into the book, okay. Well, sellers right away at 3:70. And then they started to front run that here around this uh, 69 or, you know, 68 area, uh, even a bit, a little bit lower here. Okay. That's where the sellers are. Okay. Now it's been a down day. Uh, and uh, we uh, uh, came into uh, areas of uh, targeting these other areas of high liquidity. In fact, I, I covered this in the webinar this morning a bit. Where were they? Well, there's some that layered in a little bit later here. They didn't, wasn't quite at the open. It was a little after. But look at this target here, okay? And they started to even add in more here, okay, down at this uh, 59 area, okay? Traded right down into it, and it continued on, right? Based on that, uh, I would be looking for it to trade down to 55, okay? Because we're still finding sellers uh, that, that traded through this area. Well, we had a lot of back and forth, um, and um, uh, then, uh, so it's not uh, quite as uh, 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 smooth as some of those other days. Well, you see it, it'll ping pong ball right back to where they were in the book. And they've been there since the uh, uh, beginning of the uh, session. This is new information. You can see they're bidding up in some of these areas here. So there looks like uh, larger players think that uh, a NASDAQ, I mean, um, a Netflix is a deal at some of these uh, areas here. So they're, they're, it looks like they're willing to... Uh, uh, to get in. Anyway, sellers are still trading into them, uh, as you can see here, right? So um, uh, in the end, uh, the point is the the evaluation. This is where uh, someone has evaluated is worth the buy. And even during this down day, they're still in here, okay? And they're still win willing to buy. Someone else has figured out something uh, something different here, right? Let's take a look at another example. Let's maybe look at uh, uh, Alibaba. Okay, and zoom out. All right. Yeah, same same type of thing here. In fact, uh, you can even see some of the pre-market data here. And these guys did stay in the book. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, again, some of these other areas here as well as here. Okay. So around 202. And uh, we, we went down below 202. Yeah, but they're uh, in, in traded, uh, uh, you know, just above, you know, 201 here. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's starting to slow down a bit, right? Uh, starting to find uh, uh, some uh, uh, no, or a, a lack of um, uh, aggressive selling uh, so far. We okay, haven't really found buyers yet, but we haven't found uh, uh, more sellers at these lower lows. Anyway, uh, point uh, is that uh, you can see where these larger players are evaluating uh, price because they'll, they'll stay in the book. And the guys down here at, at 200, uh, the figure, they, they've been in here all day long. All right, so point made. Uh, let's move on. 
any more examples? Uh, we can get into some of the trade examples, uh, larger players, uh, or, or book map traders, I'm sorry, um, and uh, how they're using it. Uh, and then uh, let's just jump back in, uh, in, and then into that live market, and, uh, and then I'll start to answer some of your questions as well uh, about the live market or any, anything else. All right. So um, here, this trader, uh, he, he's looking at the bigger picture at, uh, with SPY. Uh, he's noticing uh, back and forth here, and uh, he notices that uh, price is going down here. Okay, uh, for um, oh, I don't know. This is a five-minute chart, so for like about a half hour, it's going down. Okay, so looks at uh, book map. Okay, now he's he's doing a, a correlated uh, uh, comparison here with the VIX, and, and he notes in book map this really high area of liquidity here. Okay, for at forty-seven uh, sixteen uh, in the VIX. And he knows that VIX is going down. Well, something's not right. The VIX, if this is the volatility index, okay, it's showing lower volatility. Okay, well, that's not possible because something's, something's wrong here. There, there, there's a discrepancy in this correlation. This SPY is going down. Okay, it should be higher volatility. Okay, so what does he do? Uh, he sees that uh, discrepancy. He jumps in and he, and he buys here uh, just uh, one option of the S&P E-mini. Okay. He bought it at 13.25. You can see it 255 here. Okay, and then he see then he's waiting uh, for that to, that that spread uh, trade or that um, uh, correlation to come back in line. And here it is, top of the top of the range back here, uh, SPY. Okay, he he takes a look at back at um, uh, the VIX index. Okay, and now it is down. It's gone down lower into, and you can see it's starting to get into some higher liquidity here. Bottom of the, whoops bottom of the range here, okay, and decides to cover, okay, so and that correlation is, is lined up back again, right, so he's only in here for six minutes, okay, and then he sold it uh, for uh, for 15, so a buck 75, so uh, $175 uh, for six minutes, uh, and that's just his, his way of trading some of the options, okay, so, um, uh, you know, looking for uh, uh, options, but uh, also correlated markets there. All right, here's another trader looking at some of the um, uh, penny stocks, or this is uh, some of the pharmaceuticals, uh, VTVT. Uh, and uh, he's, he's eyeing here this uh, psychological level of 150. All right? Notices the break here on strong volume to the upside through that area. Okay? And, and volume starting to trade up above 150. But look at them and how they're supporting it uh, in, uh, in book map in the, um, on the bid here. Okay, high liquidity here. And it really starts to get high in these areas down here. All right. So now he's looking for, um, you can see he's drawing a trend line as well. And he wants to see if these buyers stay in control here. All right. And he notes in this little area here, and this little move to the upside, buyers jump right back in. He's looking for a low volume pullback. He gets it here, very low volume. Uh, and then uh, he's looking right into area of high liquidity. Okay. It doesn't get out of the way. It doesn't... Uh, um, you know, they don't even trade into it, it looks like. Uh, and um, uh, he wants to be a buyer, okay? And he's looking for that continuation to the upside. All right, so um, uh, just some very basic things uh, through this uh, important level at 150. All right, so uh, in terms of competitive advantage, uh, that's, um, uh, you know, you can you can see where these traders are. You can you can uh, understand their behavior, uh, and uh, you can take advantage of that. Okay, uh, so uh, that's the advantage that you're getting. And just uh, right off the bat, uh, being able to understand that full depth of market right at the cash open is going to give you advantage straight away. Okay, so let me know uh, if you have any any questions. Uh, here's that uh, uh, you know chart of book map again of uh, Apple. Uh, and now we can start to maybe read some of the uh, uh, structure, liquidity, and transactions uh, in this from the very, very beginning of the uh, uh, webinar here. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's uh, let's just go through it. I mean, you can see that uh, uh, you know we have the uh, 9:30 open somewhere around here, uh, and um, we uh, uh, you know go back and forth here. But uh, immediately we already know up here this is where they're selling 176.50. This is where they're buying. Okay, at uh, at 175, uh, and uh, we kind of go back and forth here, 
Uh, but then they front front run that liquidity here. Okay, so all of a sudden sellers come in a lot more aggressive at 176.30, okay? and uh, trade into it. It looks like, or just shy of it, and we start to rotate down, and we're looking for uh, buyers. Where do we find the buyers? Clear as day, right here. Okay, 175, right to it. Uh, it looks like they traded, they transacted, they are now long. Uh, we get a double bottom here. And look at the transactions here compared to here, okay, a lot less. We rotate back up, we find some buyers, uh, and they start to lift the offer into where? Targeting areas of high liquidity, okay, again. Uh, and then uh, this is uh, that uh, example of Apple here. I mean, they, you can see, it looks like to me, someone knew something because they jumped into the book here uh, with very high liquidity uh, on the offer. Uh, and this was that geopolitical tensions again, but the uh, uh, China uh, or Chinese uh, tariff. Okay, and uh, funny enough, as Tesla went up, you know, Apple went down, and it makes sense because this is going to hurt Apple because a lot of the uh, uh, either components or the assembly is done in China, and now that's going to hurt Apple. And you can see how traders reacted to that. Uh, anyway, where does it go to? High liquidity, targeting a high liquidity. All right, you can see someone knew something too as well. It looks like uh, this is after the market here, uh, layering in at uh, 173.90, 80, and 70. Okay, so maybe it's not such a bad deal after all. Maybe a little overreaction uh, by those uh, uh, sellers. All right, so let's get to your questions, um, and uh, and I'll start to um, you know why you guys get your questions in. Uh, we'll start to look at some of the live market. And then uh, we'll end up um, showing you where you can find bookmap here as well. Well, I'll go over that quickly, um, and then we'll look in, in, into some of these uh, live markets here. Um, so if you're interested in getting bookmap, this is the way to go. Go to bookmap.com. Okay, click on the link here in the in the toolbar, packages, and uh, this is what you need. You can either subscribe monthly or yearly, uh, and uh, what you're looking for is the global version. Okay, that's what you need for U.S. equities. Uh, and DX feed, uh, and for futures as well. Uh, global or Global Plus. The Global Plus includes our add-on indicators. That's the distinction, All right? So that's the, the version you need. So go through the uh, the purchasing process for that. And then once uh, once you've done that, the next step here is to log back into bookmap.com into the, your user portal, your bookmap portal, uh, and then click on this uh, add-ons here on the left margin. And that's where you're going to purchase DX feed. That's the data feed. Remember, software first, data next. Uh, and um, uh, get that data. Uh, and then once you click on that, you'll you'll choose your 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 um, uh, data package here for DX feed. And I'll just go through the the um, options. One is for Nasdaq depth. This is Nasdaq total view and last sale, sixty nine dollars a month. Okay. The uh, other one here is for uh, EdgeX, and that's fifty nine dollars a month. That's the bats. Uh, and then uh, we're having it. We have a deal here. Um, you can uh, get both together, EdgeX and Nasdaq, uh, and it's fifty-nine dollars for the first month, but then one nineteen uh, each month after. All right. So up to you. Uh, choose what, uh, what, whichever one you like, uh, and then um, uh, you know you can uh, you can always come come back and subscribe to something differently the the next month if you wanted. All right, so anyway, that's how you can get bookmap. Uh, and then let's start to look at some of these examples here, what's going on. Okay, now uh, the um, uh, Alibaba here, uh, you know, it's it's it keeps on, uh, it's making lower lows here, but uh, uh, they continue to add in, right? So uh, they're still interested in buyers down, you know, in buying down here, 201 and then 200. Now let's just see if we, um, you know, just reading the order flow here, uh, we have not tested into the liquidity down here at 201. Okay, and we're also, note, note our, even our CVD is starting to, we can just look at the amount of, of the color here uh, and the, the size of these uh, dots here. Um, you know, there's a lot of selling in here, but there's also a lot of buying, okay? And also here. And now, in fact, you know, look look at the uh, uh, CVD is starting to, to give us a little bit of insight of like this whole range of uh, uh, price action and tr or transactions, okay? Um, the um, there's actually throughout this whole range here, there's actually more buyers than there are sellers, okay? So 
you know, and they're not, they have not taken on these guys at uh, this 201 yet. Okay. Uh, let's see if we can get more buyers up right above here. We need to see them above like this uh, uh, 60 or 70 level. If we can get a nice cluster of aggressive buying, uh, I think that uh, we can come back up and test not only the swing here at, uh, uh, you know, around 202, but I think even higher than that. Okay. We're still in a downtrend. But we're starting to note some of the transactions here and who, who might be in control. Now, if those buyers don't show up at this area up here, okay, and they, they start to fail, uh, and we find sellers start to hit the bid, we're easily coming down to 201, very easily. Uh, and uh, and then po possibly this uh, this 200. Where is 200? Down here, yeah. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, uh, Sun, you have a question. Um, How to simple, how to use a simple uh, entry to, so you can use DX feed or IQ feed. Um, yeah, you 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 can only uh, use um, the IQ feed for uh, futures. Okay? It does it does not connect to uh, to U.S. equities. Okay, the only way that you're going to be able to connect to the equities is uh, is through this DX feed. Okay, that's just the the way that we have it right now. All right, Andre, um, in the free version, uh, I can't use limit orders. Um, well, you, you you should be able to use it in uh, uh, replay mode. Oh no, I'm sorry, you don't even have replay mode. Um, so yeah, I mean uh, you you need to you need to upgrade basically. All right, guys. Well, let's see the um, even with old version, it was looking for IQ feed working. Uh, it will work for futures. Okay, it won't won't work for uh, uh, equities. Hi, Debbie. Uh, can I explain uh, CVP SVP? Sure, no problem. Um, all right, we'll just uh, we'll just look in here. I mean, uh, okay, here's what we were looking for, right? Um, more buyers up above in this area here, so looking pretty good. Now let's just see the follow through here. Okay, if we're if we're finding more buyers here and they're not, you know, they're shying away from this uh, this O1 area, uh, then um, let's just see if. Uh, I mean, we're already rotating back down, but I'm looking to see here if um, maybe sellers will step in. Right. But if it, and, and maybe we did get a big, big cluster of selling here, then that 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 second scenario is still on the table. We're coming down lower if we don't. Right. And if, let's say we exhaust out here on the, on the sell side. We're probably going to come back up here and see more buyers and then they're going to lift that offer. OK. So uh, anyway, we'll see. Uh, it's still since we this looked good already, but we're already back down to where they initiated right here on that buy side. And uh, now we're starting to find some sellers here. Okay, here come the sellers now. All right, so uh, uh, let's uh, let's see them test into this O O one area now. Let's see what they've got. Right? They uh, if if uh, they they should have enough power selling power now uh, to get down into O one. Okay, and if they can and trade into this O one and they, maybe these guys pull a lot of this liquidity. I mean, we see almost twenty thousand shares down here. If they pull that liquidity, we're coming down to to two hundred the figure. Here, here come the sellers. Okay, so uh, that's uh, scenario number two that we we're outlining, um, and uh, that, that seems to be what's playing out right now. Okay, and I believe let's take a look here. Netflix might be quite a bit bullish uh, compared to some of the others. Maybe Apple. How does Apple look? Yeah, kind of, kind of similar. Um, has not made it down to the lows yet. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm looking for Apple to come down to this 192.50 uh, uh, here. Okay, it's looking uh, looking bearish. Nice clusters of selling too. Need a little bit more uh, for that follow through. No no CVD uh, divergence at all. It's just selling. So uh, yeah, it does look a, a more uh, more bearish here. Uh, targets 192.50. Okay, uh, and. Um, Let's see what else. Uh, anything else you guys want me to take a look at? Um, Tesla, sure. And then uh, uh, Debbie, I'll get to your question. All right. I just want to get to some of these here um, so that you guys uh, uh, can start to read this in the in the live market. Okay, Tesla is really strong. Uh, this is very uh, divergent compared to the uh, overall market. 
Okay, I know there's been news out on Tesla today, uh, but uh, it's right back down. So I, I would be I would be looking for this in Tesla. Um, you know, this where did all that initial uh, buying and this huge impulsive move up to uh, 330 take place? It was down here. Okay, where are they in the book? They're right back down there again. Okay, at uh, uh, 316, uh, the figure. Okay, and uh, you know we continue to inch down there. So uh, if we continue to sell off uh, in the broader indexes, uh, and uh, we start to see, yeah, looking for looking for the sellers to start to hit the bid here. Okay, and then let's see if we can get down into um, and test the uh, 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 316 area here. All right. Yeah. Anyway, that's what I see so far. Tesla possible, possible right here uh, that maybe we'll find some buyers. If No, we're not. Okay, we're getting our answer already. Okay, so 316 is the target uh, and um, uh, maybe 315 as well. Okay, th so they're, they're starting to pull at 316, so they're down at 315. Okay, which I actually I like that because um, uh, let's just zoom out a bit. And I'll show you why. Because where's the where's the swing low? Okay, it's it's down below 315. You can see the uh, the, the volume um, here. So uh, yeah, we'd love to see it come down below that and knock some stops out of anyone who bought today, uh, placing their stops down around that 315 area. Okay, and see them get tested. Okay, so we can get a nice little kind of uh, you know stop run uh, to the downside. Okay, uh, columns, really simple, straightforward. Um, let's look at maybe a, a simpler stock. Let's, uh, let's jump over and take a look at JP Morgan. Okay, and let me take the iceberg detector off. And we'll open up our CVD as well. Okay, uh, the... Um, uh, to add a column in Bookmap is really simple. And before I uh, I do that though, let's uh, um, I, I'm just going to take away all these columns. All right. So uh, just right click in this area, uh, and then you have all these different selections. Okay. At the bottom here, you have insert and hide, and I'm just going to hide all of these. Okay. Now I have to keep one open. Okay. So I'll keep this current order book column open right here. Okay. Now uh, to add a new column. Uh, just right click here and now we're going to, you can see we had to have one, uh, and then now we're going to insert a new one. So insert a new one and, and you'll note this now, depending on where you clicked and what column you clicked, okay, you're going to get, uh, and, and you, you, uh, insert a new column, you're going to get a duplicate of where you just came from. Okay. So now what we need to do is we need to edit this column because we don't want to look at a duplicate. Okay. So let's, uh, right click. Okay. And then you'll note that you can configure this column uh, for this data type. Now, the data type is this one, current order book. That was uh, where we came from. Okay, but I'm going to turn it into a volume column instead. Okay, now I'm showing volume. Okay, and it's CVP. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, when I right-click again, now I have some actually some, some different uh, selections up here. It's a little different because it's a different type of, of column. Uh, I have session accumulated and chart range accumulated. So um, uh, let's go over what uh, uh, session accumulated is. Okay, this is volume that has been accumulated for the entire session. So let's let's select that one. And now it says SVP, session volume profile. What it means is it's giving me the profile here of all of the volume for the entire session. So let's zoom in, and you still see all the volume here from the entire session. Okay. But chart range volume profile, let's right click here and let's uh, choose chart range accumulated instead. Okay. And now the, look at the, the, the data here is very, uh, you know, it's a lot smaller. Okay. It's only, it's only displaying uh, this little range here that's in my chart range. Okay. And it's giving me the volume profile of that chart range. And that's it. So if I zoom in here really closely, you can see it's just showing me what's in with, within my chart range. Okay. Now if I zoom out and I have more data, obviously it's going to show more. So that's the difference between session uh, accumulated and chart range accumulated. 
Uh, and um, uh, there's all sorts of resets here. Uh, and there's all sorts of different data types. Okay? Maybe you don't want to look at volume. Maybe you want to look at trade events that took place. Okay, so one transaction uh, would be would on the counter would be one for the trades counter. Okay, even if that was for 100 shares or 1,000 shares, it's still going to count just one. Okay, so you want to look at the number of uh, trade events that took place, and you might even want to compare it uh, to your volume. So you can open up another one. We'll insert a new column here. Right-click, insert new column, uh, and then right-click in this one, uh, and I'm going to change that to a trades counter. And there we go. And you'll note that, that you know, the, 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 the profiles are really, really similar here. Anyway, all sorts of stuff to, to get away or, or take away from uh, from this data. Uh, and now uh, let's let's hide that one uh, and um, let me add uh, or, or do something else. There's, so there's different options as well for each column. We're going to right click here and now we're going to we're going to uh, go to configure column. OK, and play around with these. All right. So uh, we uh, we have the different options to show here. We can show or hide uh, best bid, okay, uh, best ask volume, uh, the VWAP line, which is this white line here. Uh, we can show bars only, okay, bars and numbers, or just numbers only. Okay, uh, and it's up to you, however you like it. Now, maybe you like a profile, or maybe you don't. Maybe you want to see, since you can see this is a a, a profile uh, consolidated of both buying and selling. Well, we, since we have the data, we can split it out. Now you're starting to read the aggressor, who's in, who's in control uh, at some of these levels here. So there, you can see that there are some buyers down here, actually, right? So if there's some buyers right down here, uh, maybe they're maybe they're going to like trade it right back up into the range here, okay? Instead of more sellers down here, right? Where are they going to trade it back up to? Maybe the VWAP. Maybe they'll come back up to VWAP uh, because that's where they can cover. All right. So anyway, all sorts of different ways of looking at this uh, in terms of aggressor uh, or or profile. Now now we're rotating back and finding those sellers here. Looks like now now is the the um, no. All right, here here we go. We're, we're yeah. It looks like we're gonna come back into uh, uh, into uh, the kind of uh, uh, where it can trade back to the mean here, back to uh, VWAP here. Okay. And there it is. There's your move. All right. So all sorts of things you can take away. Uh, from just uh, some of the volume, uh, and it's up to you what how you prefer it. I, I kind of like the profile, uh, but I know all sorts of traders that uh, love looking at the aggressor and who's in control. Okay. Anyway, uh, let's see, uh, live market analysis or any other questions that you guys have. Um, let's see, another one, uh, COB column. What do the red numbers represent? Okay, so the COB column, uh, uh, Debbie, you have the um, uh, you have the iceberg detector, right? And that's that red number here. All right. So this is our older iceberg detector, uh, and um, uh, I would just uh, uh, we we kept it because some traders were accustomed to it and wanted to see it. It's showing at price levels where um, transactions took place, uh, or uh, shares traded that weren't in the order book, but you can see we've got it now on the historical chart here. So that this 372 up here, this is much more accurate to show it. Um, and let me just get rid of the heat map here for a moment. Okay, um, see this this uh, 772, uh, 100, you know, um, 1101. These these are icebergs as well. Okay. Uh, and um, we're, uh, we're more shares traded that were in, in that weren't in the in the order book at these levels. Why it's 372 and not these numbers here is because when price came back up and retested in some of these areas, uh, it got rid of some of that data. That's why it's, it it was a lot less accurate. Uh, but we kept it. Okay. But your iceberg detector is uh, wow. We're showing some you know some nice absorption up here by icebergs. Right. Uh, this some some absorption here, you know, 2200, almost 2300 here as well uh, on the bid side. But it uh, looks like the, maybe those guys had to had to cover. Uh, anyway, um, that's uh, the red numbers. That's the ice. Very very quick uh, explanation of iceberg orders. Uh, in uh, you know looking at them, and you you can see that there's quite a few of them. All right. But anyway, let's uh, go back to the heat map. 
Okay. Wow. All right. Well, not only did we come back into VWAP, we're above it to the other side of the range here. So that was kind of a nice move, uh, a nice move to see. So what happened there? Well, all sorts of things happened here. I mean, we went outside of this range here and we found buyers, okay, willing to trade it back up into the range and then some, okay? And now we're up above and, uh, uh, you know, it looks like uh, we're still finding more buyers up here. Okay. Into where though? High liquidity. Okay. Are they absorbing? Well, let's take a look. Okay. And um, are they staying in the book? All right. So we have... Um, over here about 1500 uh and uh yeah it looks like you know they're they're transacting into this area here some of it's pulling okay and uh continues to come higher transacting in these areas here uh as well and let me turn on my uh numbers and there we go all right yeah so starting to note that uh, larger players are getting interested on the sell side up here though Okay, another big sell transaction up here, noted, okay, in the uh, transactions. Okay, so we're starting to find sellers, right? So uh, let's see if we exhaust out on the buy side, and let's see if they start to hit the bid and uh, and, and drive it lower. Okay, and where where might we uh, be targeting some of those areas here? Well, probably the top of the range, maybe first, uh, where it broke from, okay, around this uh, 110.58 or so. Anyway, if we find more buyers that, uh, you know, are, are, are willing to engage up at these levels, we're finding sellers right now. But if we find more, then, uh, you know, it's going to go up. But uh, we're not right now. We're, we find sellers here. We, we note exhaustion here and here. Okay. And we're looking for to see if we can get some more sellers down here. Okay. For them to uh, hit that bid. Here they come. I need a lot more than that. Right, and looking for them to to continue to hit that bid uh, down into this maybe 11050 area, okay, maybe even lower, maybe uh, 11038. Anyway, quick analysis there on uh, JP Morgan, uh, but it's very simple stuff. Same stuff we've been going over, been going over uh, since uh, we began with the webinar. Okay, understanding these areas of liquidity in the auction, uh, understanding the transactions. Uh, Etc. Let's jump back and uh, take a look at some other. Uh, let's see. Oh, we'll just go back this way from uh, uh, right to left. Let's take a look at Apple. Uh, all right. Well, we were targeting what in Apple? Okay, 192.50 right to it. Okay, beautiful stuff. Okay, so um, uh, yeah, you know that that just happened, and we're getting a nice little bounce out of that area too. Okay, so you know I'm not making this stuff up. Uh, it's what how the market works. Uh, it's you know the, you can see the liquidity here. You can see it transacted into it, and they're still they still want to be buyers. They're showing up again here at 192.50. Lot lot less, but they're still here. Uh, let's see Alibaba. Let's see what's going on there. Okay, we traded through the. Uh, 201 definitely All right and uh that's uh and then we just we we started to go lower but uh, then they started to come right back in here okay so the buyers were supporting it um uh you know they 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 started pulling here but they came right back in uh and then we came up above this area here so yeah, and then right back down and retested them. Um, but uh, we're, we're finding buyers now. We can see the retest here, though. Uh, we're, we are getting some pretty good pretty good uh, in, insights uh, here. The retest, look at the sellers down here. Okay. not It's starting to exhaust out. Okay. It's due to this massive absorption here. Uh, and um, uh, and then where do we find buyers? Up at this higher higher area here. And now we're seeing the follow through on that buy side. So I imagine the entire markets are starting to change over now uh, and we're starting to find buyers probably uh, maybe into the close here. Um, let's see, uh, Facebook, we, did we look at that? Okay, same same situation here. Uh, pretty nice that, uh, you know, same, same areas down here, this 187, and then they're supporting it again and they're adding more in at 187. 
So uh, that's been uh, kind of bullish here as well. Let's take a look, quick look at Tesla. Uh, and um, uh, Dan, I'll get to your question in just a minute. Okay, Tesla, what were, we were looking for 316 uh, and then possibly 315 to trade as well. Okay, because they were pulling here at 316, right? Uh, well, we didn't even get to 316. Even though they pulled, we didn't get to it. Um, I liked it. I liked uh, 315 quite a bit because it was below the uh, the swing low of the day here, which is, that would be nice to see those stops hit. We're finding buyers though. Okay, so if buyers are going to support it down here where they uh, initially supported it in this move to the upside, I'm looking for them to come right back in. Now, now I, I have a different perspective. I'm looking for um, uh, 320 and then some of the other areas up here, some of the swings. Uh, and I, I see they were here at, at, at 2250, but they pulled. Uh, they're still up here at 24 a little bit, but really the, the big target is 25. Okay? And this has been bullish. So yeah, I'm looking for 25. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, and Netflix, and we'll then we'll end it up here. We we gotta we gotta go here pretty soon. Uh, Netflix has been uh, kind of an interesting one today. We did make it to the swing low here, and they stayed in the book. They were here for a while. Okay, this is kind of similar to to Apple, uh, and uh, now we're starting to find the uh, the buyers. It looks like the they they absorbed it here at, at three fifty eight. Okay, and uh, now we're starting to find some buyers. Okay, did not make the lower low. Uh, and um, let's see if we can get it. I don't see them on the uh, on the bid, or I'm sorry, on the offer uh, in some of these areas yet. Uh, so just kind of, uh, you know, I, I mean, maybe 62, but uh, man, they're way up here. Uh, so uh, not not really seeing where this might go here. Just looking at some of the structures and some of the highs. So maybe 362 in the swing. Okay. All right. Can you share a new symbol? Uh, how to acquire 24-hour data. Yep. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to have to close one of them. Let's close. We didn't even look at IBM. Uh, so let's, uh, or Microsoft. Let's, yeah, let's close Microsoft. Okay. And I'll add a new symbol. Okay. So uh, I'll add uh, DX feed. Okay. Select, select that. Uh, and then select your symbol. So now if you don't see your symbol selected here in the, in the dropdown, it's, uh, it's really simple. Just um, uh, type it in. Okay, so uh, let's look at, uh, well, I don't know, anything in particular you guys want to look at? Um, let's see. Oh, God, I don't, I don't care. Um, well, we can look at, uh, at oil. Let's look at some crude uh, XOM. And uh, let's look at... Um, uh, yeah, uh, then you, you, you have your advanced options here for because you're going to get 24 hours of historical data uh, downloaded. OK, and so click on the download link here or the historical data, um, you know, add link here. And then uh, let's uh, boy, I have 48 hours. I don't think it, you only get 24 hours, though. So let's uh, let's select 24 okay, and then let's now subscribe okay, and we'll wait for the uh, symbol to pop up here. OK. Here it is. Now let's click on it. Okay, and you can see it's still downloading historical data here. Oh, it looks like it's finished. Okay, and let's zoom out. Okay, yeah, it didn't look like it, it, it actually uh, did it here. Um, let's try that again. All right, I'm gonna close this up. And uh, let's add it again. And let's try for 48. It seemed like it was pretty, a little too quick just to begin with. All right. Um, yeah, Dan, um, something, something's a little amiss on that. Okay. We, oh, I'm sorry. Here it is. We want to click on this link here. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll check in with the developers on that. Um, why that's uh, it's not quite working correctly. Uh, it was last week, uh, but um, uh, anyway. All right. Any more questions? Let's see how Apple's doing. 
No, you're welcome. Uh, okay, yeah, no, it looks like uh, that, uh, well, we covered a bunch of different stocks, live market. Um, we didn't see some nice examples, uh, not so nice, like uh, like some of the presentation. So I'm glad we did go over some of the presentation, uh, you know, here, because uh, some of these examples up here, they're, they're really nice and clear. Um, and um, uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's zoom back down here to the bottom. Uh, and, uh, and just let me know if you have any questions. If you're interested here, uh, this is uh, that, that process. Again, go to bookmap.com. Uh, yeah, you, you will need the Bookmap 7 Global uh, or Global Plus. Okay. So uh, I forgot to mention that. Okay. This is the new beta version, Bookmap 7. Okay. So when you, when you subscribe, uh, make sure that you, uh, you download Bookmap 7, not 6. Okay. This is uh, the version that uh, you need. It has the colored heat map. All right. So subscribe either global or global plus and then log into bookmap.com add-ons here click on the left margin uh, get your dx feed here okay all right and and again like the uh, the overall goal here was to show this competitive advantage okay and i'll just back up and uh, uh i mean you can see how we went through live market uh and started to look at some of those areas and uh we have that information we have that data that's our advantage Okay, and then interpreting it, understanding the context of it is uh, is the key, okay? and that comes through uh, starting to use it. And Bookmap comes with education. Okay, there's a four-part educational course, and then we have live market analysis every day. Okay, that covers that same educational content. We just go through it in the live market and do exactly what we're doing here, starting to anticipate the the, the future price movements based on what we see in our analysis. Okay. And in terms of competitive advantage, again, like right off the bat, you're going to see it where they're layering in uh, into the markets uh, right when the, the market opens. And you'll have all that information in front of you. And that's a really nice advantage. Just just the depth of market alone is, uh, uh, I think, the worth, worth the cost. It's total, it's total book, yeah. Um, Oh yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Manasac Total View is gives you the full depth, full depth uh, book. Okay. All right, all right, guys. Well, thanks for coming. Um, and uh, we went over the time uh, limit, but um, uh, covered uh, a lot of different things. Let me know if you have any questions. You can always reach out uh, to me at bruce at bookmap dot com, uh, and um, and take it from there. Okay. All right, thanks, guys. Yeah, have a good day. Bye bye.